Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your own paste bin clone in Docker using a container called LenPaste. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. If you don't want to, or can't for whatever reason, self-host applications the way we talk about on this channel, Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable for you to host anything in the cloud. You can set up any of the applications that they have available in their marketplace with just a few clicks, or you can set up your own Docker VPS and install basically whatever you'd like in a Docker container. They have load balancers and firewalls available to help keep your apps online and safe. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24 seven customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash dbtech and get a $100 60 day credit on your new Linode account. Links are in the description. Okay guys, here we are on my desktop and this is LenPaste. And you can kind of think of LenPaste, like I said, a little bit like a paste bin clone, just a little dumbed down, uh, but for all the right reasons, in my opinion. Uh, basically, if we come over here, we can see that uh, you can put in a title, uh, you can put in text. In fact, if I just come over here real quick, uh, let's just grab this just so we can, just so we can see uh, what that's gonna look like. Um, this is actually the Docker Compose that we will end up using for uh, for deploying LenPaste, but I just kind of wanted to give you a, an idea of what it looked like when you were using it. Uh, so let's actually take that latest tag off of there. And here we can see that it is it is got everything formatted appropriately. We've got a ton of different options for uh, different uh, syntaxes that it will take a look at. We're going to use YAML, of course, because this is a YML file, Docker YML, Docker Compose.yml file format, whatever you want to call it there. Um, we've also got uh, the option to burn after reading. We're not going to do that. Uh, this is something we might want to share. Uh, below that, we've actually got uh, the option for uh, expiration, like how long do we want this to last? Uh, I'm going to leave this as never, just because I think that'll be the easiest thing to do. Of course, like it says here, you could actually, you know, only leave it up for half an hour or a day or a week or however long makes sense if you want this to, uh, to go away after a certain period of time. I absolutely love that. Uh, below that, we've got the, the option for advanced parameters where you can put your name, email address, and URL in there. You can also set this uh, in the settings, which of course is over here. Now, the thing to keep in mind with LenPaste is there, there is no logging in. In fact, if we come over to, uh, to here, uh, let's see. No need to register, does not use cookies, can work without JavaScript, actually has its own API, um, and is open source and self-hosted. Of course, those are all really good things to see when we're trying to self-host something. Uh, in fact, this is um, the... I don't want to call it the GitHub because that's not GitHub. The developer here has actually decided to leave GitHub. Uh, there's a link over here. This is the original GitHub. In here, there's a reason that they left. And they're absolutely within their rights to do that with an explanation down here that they gave if you wanted to read that. Links to everything, of course, will be in the description down below. So uh, like I said, you can go ahead and set up all of this. Again, there are additional settings up here. We've got options up here for OSs if you wanted to do that. Uh, and then, of course, once you are uh, happy with however this looks, and of course, we will come back and look at that Docker Compose uh, here a little later. This is just for demonstrative purposes for the time being. Once you're happy with this, you can click on Create New Paste, and there you go. Uh, and we've actually got a URL up here now. Of course, I put it on a domain name, uh, but it actually gave us, you know, uh, just a little, a little appended uh, character string there uh, for the URL that is specific to this, uh, to this paste, to this, um, well, to this, yeah, to this paste, I guess is what we would call it, to this bin, I guess. Um, but since we're here, let's go ahead and actually take a look at what this uh, Docker Compose looks like. Uh, it is a version two. We've got one service here, which of course is LenPaste. Uh, we can see that we're actually going to pull uh, directly from their uh, from their repository. Uh, the restart policy is always, which is good. I've actually had a few containers recently that I didn't set a restart policy on and it just, so I'm glad that that's in there. Anyway, below that, we've got environmental variables. It says all of these parameters are optional. Um, so we've got the first one is a LenPaste address. We're going to put that on port 80. Um, of course, you don't have to use that. You don't have to use any of these if you don't want to, but you absolutely can. Uh, we've got a database driver of uh, SQLite 3. Uh, we've got a, a place where we're going to store said database file. Uh, we've got the cleanup period uh, for database, just random cleaning up uh, extraneous stuff. 
Uh, we've got, uh, for, and that's currently set to three hours. You can change that if you'd like. Uh, do we want to uh, allow or disallow robots? Uh, you can uh, set robots disallow flag uh, here if you want to do that. We can actually set the max length for both the title and the body of the paste. So that's nice. If you didn't want people overrunning your server or wanted to limit yourself even, you can definitely set limits on that. If you'd like to get early access to my content, you can head over to Patreon, become a channel member here on YouTube, or head over to dbtech.fans. And any of those ways will help support the channel and give you early access to ad-free content. Next, we've got max paste lifetime, by default set to never. Uh, so that's kind of that override uh, where we where we selected how long do we want it to last before it goes away. Uh, by default, it's set to never. Uh, you could actually set this to a specific time in here if you wanted to do that for the default. And of course, you've got a name and email address. Uh, in fact, we can actually see, if we go over here to settings, uh, no, I lied, and about, here is the maximum title length, the maximum body length, the name, the email address, all of those that are here were actually set in this Docker Compose. Uh, so that's what's going on there. Below that, we've got some volumes for uh, for the database. Of course, I didn't, I haven't actually needed to un uncomment that line. So I guess you're probably fine. If you were going to make this public and expected other people to use it, you might want to uncomment the about and the rules page so that you could, uh, you know, kind of set forth some standards by which people would be uh, expected to to uh, follow, you know, just to make sure that they're following all of the rules that you set. Uh, below that, we do have, a, again, that place where we're going to host the, uh, the land paste database. Um, and then we've got a time zone uh, and local time for the server just to make sure that everything kind of stays synchronized the way we might want them to. And of course, below that, we've got the ports. Uh, this was originally set to 80. I changed it, uh, but I did leave it at 80 here because I've got 80 up here on that uh, on that address flag line. So that's kind of what's going on with regards to uh, the Docker Compose in this. Um, so let's let's actually just go ahead and cut. Well, first I lied. Let's let's not do that yet. We have the option to click raw. That's going to bring us over to here and just give us the raw code, which I appreciate. Uh, we can download it if we want to do that. Uh, and that's just going to download a YAML file because that's uh, the the language or the the syntax we told it to have. And then if we wanted to, we'd actually even embed this um, by by using an iframe if you wanted to do that. Now the other thing to keep in mind with this is that. Um, you're not going to be able to go back and edit this. You're not going to be able to uh, go back to all of your previous pastes unless you store those somewhere. Because again, there 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 are no uh, accounts for this. There's no login. There's there's no cookies. There's there's none of that. So once it gets stored, uh, that's it. If you want to modify it, you'll need to copy it, paste it somewhere else, and modify it uh, in order to do that. But once it's saved here, that's it. Like it's it's there. Again, unless you set it to expire after a certain amount of time. So something to keep in mind there as well. Since we're uh, still taking a look at this, like I said, it does have an API. Uh, the API version one, if we click that, uh, here we can kind of see all of the syntax for that. Fairly well written out in my opinion. Uh, we've got table of contents up here as well. And then of course we've got a list of libraries working with the API. Uh, the, the developer recommends pasteapi.go uh, for, uh, for that. So something to keep in mind. However, there are other out of date options that you could look at as well if you wanted to go that route. Hey guys, this part of the video is strictly for my Canadian viewers. So if you're not Canadian, uh, skip this video and I'll wait until you're done. Okay. Hopefully everybody who's not Canadian is now uh, somewhere else in the video. If you are Canadian and you're looking to get into self-hosting, but you don't want to break the bank with new hardware, you should definitely check out the folks over at Refurb Feed. They have a huge selection of always changing inventory of products that have been used and refurbished and are ready to go for your next home lab project. And if you use code DBTECH when you check out, you can get 10% off your next laptop purchase. Be sure to check the description of any of the products you consider purchasing as some of them may not have a hard drive or they may not have a power supply, but all of that will be listed in the product description of each of the products as applicable. So be sure to head over to refurbfeed.com for your next home lab purchase. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, let's actually go back to here. Let's copy this. And then let's jump over to Portainer. And we're gonna deploy this in Portainer for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first is uh, just simplicity, uh, if I'm being honest. Uh, so then we're gonna come over here to stacks. We're going to add a stack. We're gonna paste this in. Uh, and of course you can, uh, you know, put the database source wherever you'd like it to be on your server, depending on your server setup. This is just where I'm gonna put mine in home slash docker slash lenpaste at lenpaste.db. 
I'm going to go ahead and put in a, a name there. Um, and basically I'm just going to leave all of this like it is. And I'm going to click on deploy the stack. Uh, this should go relatively quickly. Uh, the, the file size of this Docker container is very, very small of like 19 or 20 megs. So this should happen pretty quickly here. Okay, there we go. So now we've got this up. Let's actually jump over to our images here. Uh, right here we can see uh, Lempaste is 18.9 megs, uh, which I'm super stoked with. I love having a smile, a small file size like that for a fully functioning Docker container. Really, really impressed with that. Uh, of course, we come back over here to containers. We've got our Lenpaste one. Uh, that's the name it gave it. And if I click on, oops, I haven't actually set the environmental variables for that, have I? Or not the environmental variables, just the environment for that. So let's do that just real quick. This is a brand new uh, install uh, of, uh, of my Docker server. It's actually running in a portainer. Portainer. It's actually running in a Proxmox setup. Just so we can kind of take a look at a couple of things. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll go back to our containers and then we'll click on 8438. And just like that, we're up and running. There's no configuration. There's nothing else to do other than just deploy the container and go. Uh, of course, if you wanted to put this on a reverse proxy, you absolutely could. Uh, I'm running all of my reverse proxies through Cloudflare Tunnels, uh, which I highly recommend because it doesn't involve any port forwarding. Uh, so there's definitely that to consider. Um, but putting this on a reverse proxy is super, super easy. Easy. There's lots of different ways you can do that. But now that we've got this up and running, let's actually jump back over to my Proxmox and look at our at our summary here. And we can kind of get an idea of uh, kind of what's going on. It looks like it's using just over 100, about 120 megs of RAM. It's got 512 uh, megs available to it. Yeah, 120, 119.4, uh, barely using any swap. Uh, the boot disk is using 1.78 gigs. Of course, that's my, my very generic uh, Debian install there with this on top of it. But again, we're only using uh, less than two gigs for the for the full operating system and the Docker container running. Uh, we're using 120 megs of RAM. Uh, so this is a super lightweight Docker container that I absolutely love uh, just because it's easy to use. Uh, it's no frills, it's no gimmicks. It does what it says on the tin and that's it. So uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. Again, there will be links to everything in the description down below if you wanna check that out. Um, but I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Uh, if you run into any issues with this, definitely head over to uh, to the developer's page, again, linked in the description, open tickets as necessary. Uh, I've already let him know that I'm making this video. So uh, I think with that said, I'm gonna wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.